Most Watched News in Western Washington. With coverage you can count on. Number one at 11, King 5 Television. Seventy-five years ago, on this field, King 5 made broadcast history. The first TV broadcast north of Los Angeles and west of the Mississippi River. A high school football game bringing the community together in a way that had never been done before. We celebrate 75 years of community, connecting with the youngest hearts. Sharing in heartbreak. So I went to my knees and said the prayer, and I just responded as a director to what he was doing, and we slowly panned the cameras up into the sky. Paving the trail for the next generation. There weren't any um, local television anchor women anywhere in the country that I knew about. It was a time of change, and we were kind of right in the middle of it. Witnessing history on the front lines. We're standing next to a, a pile of lit dynamite. The mountain blew up. The only exception is that we don't know how long the fuse is. And shining a light on injustice. King 5 has a history of taking on these issues. Of the general protest movements which have shaken our country in the 1960s. Join us to see Seattle grow through the decades. With the maiden flight of Boeing 707 prototype. Share with us in the memories. We did the classic demonstration. No! Oh! The laughs. He can just pull a hamstring. <laughs> the unforgettable plays. <laughs> and our coverage across the globe. We're over the Isle of Crete in the Mediterranean, heading for Cairo, Egypt. With the governor in China, Lori Matsukawa. Good morning from Moscow, where it is 3 o'clock in the morning. And 10 time zones from Seattle. As we celebrate 75 years at King 5 News. For the next hour, we want to share with you some of the wonderful moments that we have captured from Seattle and beyond. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joyce Taylor. I'm Greg Copeland. It's not just our history, it's yours. For 75 years, we have seen the Northwest grow through the lens of our cameras. And it all starts with our trailblazing founder. Let's go back to 1948 and meet Dorothy Bullitt, a visionary with an iconic raspy voice and a heart committed to truth. At the time, she's a middle-aged widow, the mother of three, and a savvy businesswoman on the brink of making broadcasting history. This is Radio King, Seattle, K-I-N-G. She is the new owner of a struggling radio station on the 21st floor of the Smith Tower. But her future changes on Thanksgiving Day, November 25th. That's when Seattle's only TV station broadcasts its first show. KRSC, soon to become King. <laughs> broadcast a high school football game at Seattle's Memorial Stadium. Two teams will play for the state championship, the West Seattle Indians and the Wenatchee Panthers. We were the underdogs coming from uh, Eastern Washington and uh, playing the big kids from uh, Seattle. And so it was very big for the team as well as the community. The day is partly sunny, but the field is muddy and wet and the audio cables lying in the rain begin to buzz. Viewers can barely see or hear the 49-yard touchdown that ends the game in a 6-6 tie. Still, the historic telecast makes headlines and impresses about a thousand viewers watching the game from their homes, bars, and hotel lobbies. Dorothy Bullitt was also watching that day. And it was really very funny looking on a seven-inch set. Uh, couldn't see the ball, so could hardly see the players. Bolstered by the viewership, Mrs. Bullitt buys the FM and television properties of KRSC in 1948. The King Broadcasting Empire is born. It was very chancy, and I was, uh, I was very much afraid of it, but I thought we could maybe swing it. She just seemed to think that uh, it, this new medium uh, had a bright future. As the new owner of KRSC, Dorothy Bullock quickly changes the call letters to King for a negotiated price of $375,000. She gets two cameras, a transmitter, a remote truck that was formerly a bread truck, and a tiny studio, plus a handful of employees. They are the trailblazers of television, 
and Mrs. Bullitt must convince them to stay. And Mrs. Bullitt came up to our transmitter and just started to talk with some of the people who were working there at that time. And she explained how deeply she felt the obligation was to provide the community with a service. And she talked about some of the things she wanted to accomplish and that she couldn't do it without us. We never left. All set. Okay, let's uh, bring up Baker Camera. We're in Baker Camera now. Hello, Master Control. Are you ready? King would become only the 11th television station in the United States, the only station west of the Mississippi and north of San Francisco. Mrs. Bullitt paid $75 for the logo King Mike, created by Walt Disney. The whole time I was CEO, the Bullets never talked to me about profits. Never once. It was a community service that happened to kick off a whole lot of money. Right from the start, King makes a commitment to the community. Dorothy Bullitt was a daily presence at King until her death in 1989 at the age of 97. Every day, for as long as her strength allowed, Mrs. Bullitt came to work at King TV, determined to serve the community, just as she promised. So what did that community service look like? I'm Jake Wittenberg, here in the King 5 Archive Room, where we can find programs of a different generation, taking us back to another era, when photographers and engineers would lug big, heavy cameras out and shoot on film. And there was a lot of time to fill. At first, King only broadcast five hours a day, and filling time was difficult. So the cheapest and smartest thing was to put talented people, local people, in, in front of the camera. And the best example of that is Stan Borson. You UW student Stan Borson, along with piano player Art Bardoon, played a regular 15-minute show called Two Bees at the Keys. And in keeping with Dorothy's love of education, a show called Wanda Wanda was born, starring Ruth Prince. She would tell stories and had all these magical characters with puppets. It's decades before Sesame Street. In the 1950s, a new larger studio was a perfect space for a new cooking show called King's Queen, hosted by Good B. Donovan. Good afternoon, everyone. And a new hour-long weekly show was formed called March On. It became a popular way to showcase musicians at Fort Lewis. TV had the opportunity, beginning in the 1950s and 60s, to actually glue the community together. And when it worked really well, that's exactly what King did. And that's, I think, King did that more than anybody else. Now, let's see how they go through that. And long before there was NFL football to draw in the live sports-loving masses, there was hydro racing. Covering live sports was an entirely new challenge in 1951. And when it's live, that means anything can happen, including a fatal crash. Sports reporter Bill O'Mara was on the call at the time. So I went to my knees and said the prayer. At its core, Broadcasting is a human relationship, you know, one-to-many kind of thing. That's so critical, and I think King set the standard for that. Through the years, King programming has been at the heart of what we do. And in a city where billion-dollar mergers and tech startups dominate the communication industry today, it's important to remember where it all began, with humble beginnings and a vision to connect us all on air. Dorothy Bullitt set the tone for generations of women who broke down barriers in journalism. One of them is in studio with me today, and between them, they have more than a century of experience covering news in Seattle. Joyce Taylor, Lori Matsukawa, and Jean Anderson, the first woman to anchor a weekday newscast in the nation. King 5's Jessica Janner Castro sat down with them to talk about that legacy. Okay, well, this is really awesome. Thanks all for being here. I feel pretty honored to be in your presence. <laughs> Thank you for asking us. Yeah. Yeah. So Jean, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite mo memories and moments at King 5? Well, I guess my first favorite memory is getting hired here. <laughs> <laughs> There weren't any um, local television anchor women anywhere in the country that I knew about. Is the first of three major Watergate defendants to begin serving time. But if you're in that spot at the time, you don't think about that. You just think, can I get this job? Can I do this job? Why'd they give me this job? You know, it was just a lucky break. Really lucky timing, lucky break. Are there any memorable stories that you did in particular? Maybe a top two. Oh my gosh. I got to interview a lot of sitting presidents. Mm -hmm. Some of them were standing, some of them were sitting. <laughs> but most of them that we all recall, oh, so you know, in our lives. And though. some of them are just very commonplace people. Some of them were, they seemed um, just like regular Joes. Like Jean, I think being hired at King Five was a terrific honor because King Five was the big tamale in the market, right? Yeah. 
My most memorable story was following then Governor Gary Locke on his first trade mission to China and the visit to his little ancestral village. It was 10 days of exhausting work, but it was really quite fulfilling because we got to go everywhere the governor went, including um, into Beijing to see the president of China. Joyce, what about you? And don't tell me it was when you got hired. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was, but I'm just taking in these two legends. Jean has been to Russia. Lori talks about going to China. And I went to the Super Bowl. Oh. <laughs> But it honestly is getting hired because being from the Northwest, I grew up watching King 5. My dream job literally was to work at King 5 someday. Was there a sense of camaraderie because, you know, you were sharing in a way this experience of, you know, holding the torch and kind of passing it along and, and being these like really powerful women at King 5? I would say 100%, yeah, absolutely. totally. Coming up on News Service. It was truly a historic time, you know, Jean being the first, mm -hmm. you know, regular weeknight anchor woman in the nation, okay, right. right here at King. And then at a time when there weren't that many women in television news. And then the d increasing diversity on King 5. Okay, oh wow, they're gonna have an Asian American woman be on the anchor desk, and they're gonna have an African American woman on the anchor desk. It was a time of change, and we were kind of right in the middle of it. But we follow a really amazing woman. Right. I mean, the founder of King was Dorothy Bullitt. Right. And at the time when the station started and when all of us came to work, it was still relatively small, and King was a leader in the community in so many ways, on the air and in the community, and she kind of led the way. Joyce. And I tell young people, yeah. you are enough, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that makes you you, that is enough for whatever you're going to do. Don't try to be like or sound mm -hmm. like or talk like anyone yeah. else. Just be you mm -hmm. and be proud of that. I always thought, oh gosh, when they look at me or hear my voice, they're going to fire me for sure. <laughs> but I would say to uh, uh, my younger self and, it, and anybody who feels a lack of confidence, believe that you can do it and you will be able to do it. An incredible legacy. I can't begin to tell you how much I've learned from all three of you over all these years. And how lucky I feel, right? <laughs> Both of to us. To work with all of them and you too. Well, you can't have the news without the weather, right? And did you know it all started with cartoons? Rich Marriott shows us how we fine-tuned the forecast for 75 years. Weather forecasting dates back to the earliest days of television, but it was especially hard in the 50s when there was not a lot of weather information. So to keep it interesting, King 5 hired Bob Hale, a renowned local sign painter. And that's all I've done all my life is draw cartoons. I never thought I'd be on television doing it, but here we are. Bob blazed the trail for a decade, accompanied by his forecasting cartoon characters like Ole Snow and Sammy Siegel, just to name a few. Bob Cram took over and continued the cartooning tradition through the 60s. But as the science of meteorology took shape, New stations traded cartoons for magnetic weather maps. In the early days, I was at the National Weather Service, where former meteorologist Jeff Renner would go to get his daily satellite data for the newscast. Literally pull out a paper satellite picture, take a Polaroid photo of it, and then bring that Polaroid photo back to the studio. And I remember that there was one Polaroid camera, and you guys all shared it. We did. You see temperatures range quite a bit. When I joined King TV in the 80s, the computer revolution ushered in a new era and green screened forecasts. Washington State is a notoriously difficult place to forecast weather. The force of nature bears down on western Washington. Do you have a total of the number of inches so far in 24 oh, hours? It's incredible when you take a look at it. That's why in 1994, King installed the first operational Doppler radar in Puget Sound. Year by year, we learn a little more about the complex microclimates that make up western Washington. There's been wonderful research done locally and nationally that gives us a much better feel. You know, you think of things like the Puget Sound Convergence Zone, you have a much better feel for where it's going to be. But our forecasters are not confined to the studio. We love getting outside and showing you the conditions live. We're teaching you more about the world around us and what makes the forecast tick. We've had long form stories, we've done documentaries. Never underestimate the ability of your viewers and their interest in what you're talking about. And I think we saw our role both, both as meteorologists, as scientists, but also as educators. And you're never too young to start learning. So this is going to be a low, and I think it's, it looks like Montana or something. Yeah. Oklahoma, maybe. Our programming can also be fun, from comedy to weird science and uncovering the secret magical corners of the Northwest. Jim Dever looks back at some of the programs that took us far beyond our newsroom. 
uh, anyone When I walked in to King Five in 1989, what astonished me was the massive commitment to local programming. You know, you had shows like Almost Live, Seattle Today, Evening, which became Evening Magazine, and then back to Evening. All those shows just bringing this unique content to the viewers of the Northwest who may not even realize how fortunate they are to have all these local shows showcasing the area. It really is a gift. John Stofflet spent more than 15 years at King 5, working at Evening as a reporter and producer. He also did a stint as a high five and white guy. With Evening, John introduced us to local luminaries, sat down with corporate giants, <laughs> and traveled the world. We're in India at the Taj Mahal for lunch, and by the end of the day, we're in the tropical paradise of the Seychelles Islands. And viewers have been lucky enough to go along for the ride. <laughs> Since its debut on King 5 in 1986, Evening has been Western Washington's guide to the Northwest and beyond. It's the only show on King 5 without a dedicated studio, taking viewers on the road to discover fascinating people and places. Audiences also journeyed across the region with Northwest Backroads. The show launched in 1998, hosted by 70s heartthrob and star of Eight is Enough, Grant Goodeve. King produced the sketch comedy show Almost Live for 15 years, beginning in 1984, catapulting the careers of host John Keister, Bill Nye the Science Guy, and actor Joel McHale. The show had a live audience, and bits like The Lame List, The Ballard Driving Academy, and Green River Dance were so popular in the Pacific Northwest that the local comedy show aired at 11.30 p.m relegating Saturday Night Live to a later time slot. Approximately seven minutes ago at 6.53 p.m., the Space Needle collapsed. Almost Live also gained national attention in 1989 for an April Fool's prank, a fake news report that the Space Needle had collapsed. It was so convincing, some people believed it, and the show had to issue an apology. It's these legacies and dedication to local programming that make King 5 stand out across the Northwest and the country. I was so privileged to be a part of King 5 75 years for, for 16 years. In that commitment to local programming, whether it was the majority of the work that I did for Evening and a few bits here and there for Almost Live, really the highlight of my career, just so fun to be a part of a station that is so committed to the community and to bringing people a great product. And hey, evening's still going, still going. How's this for history? The Columbia River cut in two by the Dalles Dam. King 5 broadcast the first flow of water live with its sister station from Portland back in 1957. How about it? We'll give the man the signal and open the gate. Hard to believe I've been here for a third of King's 75 years. Within just days of our very first newscast, King's very first news anchor, Charles Herring, reported on our first big news story, a wildfire raging near the Olympic Peninsula town of Forks. The worst forest fire in the state of Washington in this decade. The first in a history of natural disasters King followed. A 1965 magnitude 6.7 earthquake that rattled Seattle businesses and literally flooded the streets with beer. The foundation gave way beneath an aging tank at the Rainier Brewery, snapping a valve and spewing forth nearly a thousand gallons of beer. The volume was so great that for a time some of the suds bubbled up across Airport Way in front of the brewery. The King 5 News team sprang in 2001, myself included, when the 6.8 Nisqually quake caused a billion dollars of damage. When the earthquake hit on Wednesday, the road split right down the middle. A warning sign for a growing threat of a massive quake that seismologists were just beginning to understand. We found out our earthquake situation got worse. -er. The fault was deep underground. How deep? 35 miles underground. And our need to prepare got more and more dire. The ground beneath us isn't the only looming danger. 
May 18, 1980, a defining day for Washington State as Mount St. Helens erupts. Former King 5 meteorologist and science reporter Jeff Renner. The assignment editor at the time said, Jeff, we want you and Bill Fenster, a photographer at the time, to go down to Mount Rainier and take mountain climbing lessons. Well, the reason was they thought Mount Baker was going to erupt first. But when St. Helens rumbled to life in 1980, King 5 got a front seat. I was able to find a, a ridge uh, where we could look down the valley and there was Mount St. Helens. A fateful last minute decision to come down from the mountain may have saved the crew's life. The day after the eruption, the crew took a helicopter to their last campsite and spotted a burned out car. Inside was one of the 57 victims of the explosion. But I put on that sort of journalist frame of mind in terms of I want to see because this was like 50 yards from where we were camped, what would have happened to us. That recognition of just how close you came, but what the true personal cost was. Live from Seattle, this is a King 5 News special report. An historic storm in 1990 sent the I-90 bridge sinking into Lake Washington just weeks before its replacement was set to open. Whether it was a flood or a windstorm or a wildfire, we were able, to, with our camera and our live gear, to take the viewer there. The state didn't have insurance on the bridge, so uh, We'll just have to wait and see who's going to foot the bill for it. Disaster struck again in 2014. The deadliest mudslide in American history washed through the community of Oso, killing 43 people. Snohomish County rallied behind the people affected with a message oh so strong. To see the strength in adversity of this community, I think should inspire all of us. Resiliency runs deep in Washington State. It kept the community of Sumas together after historic floods swept through their downtown. All day and now into the night, we've been watching people with their own personal fishing boats and in some cases even tractors uh, crossing this washed out road here. For 75 years, our cameras have been there. We aren't there just to show devastation, but to show the strength of the human spirit and the power of the community to rise to the challenge, no matter the hardship. So on top of the daily news and features, journalists at King 5 have spent months on stories that changed laws and exposed problems in our world. The King 5 investigators give us an up-close look at that legacy. Holding people in power to account. It's such an important part of our job, I think. We're after the information that people don't want to tell us about. And we try. We always give them lots of opportunities. Even if they don't want to talk to us and oftentimes they don't. Hi, Mr. Johnson, I'm Susanna Frame from King TV. We've talked on the phone before. I'm Chris Ingalls from King 5. Well, we'd like to talk to you about your business. What about it? Can you tell us why the public was misled no. for several months last year? Sometimes you just have to get out there and do it. It's not fun, but we just can't let people off the hook. Are you rolling back odometers? No, I'm not. I just like to talk to my lawyer, but I don't know what's going on over here. Sir? Chris Ingalls from King 5. No. Yes, this is you right here? Is that you? There are times we literally have to chase people down to find the truth. And I've seen you do it. Sir, I, you have to explain this to me, sir. How could you allow this to happen, not once, but twice? Um, I'm Susanna Frame from King TV. Sorry, any questions? We're here to talk to you about your timesheets during baseball season. No, you're not. The King 5 investigators of today, we stand for truth and accountability, but King 5 started that standard decades ago. It was a long time ago that they really had a big first. I love this fact. King 5 was the first local television station in America to produce a documentary, and it was called Lost Cargo. That documentary did change public policy. They convinced voters to pass a $20 million bond issue, a lot of money back then, to improve the waterfront. You know, there was another a groundbreaking King documentary in the 1970s that was nothing like anybody had ever seen on television before. It's probably the most devastating film ever seen on television. That's reporter Don McGaffin. He exposed the horror of children's pajamas and nightgowns Back then, they were all cotton, and they were extremely flammable. Can you sit up, sweetheart? So that story led to the non-flammable sleepwear that your children will wear when they go to bed tonight. That is so amazing. What a legacy. Back then, they called that unit public affairs. From the investigative team of King 5 News. The unit you know today, the King 5 investigators, that started in the early 90s. Even though the name changed for our unit, Goals are the same. An example of that, waste on the water. We found the Washington State Ferry System spending, wasting millions of dollars on perks 
for ferry workers, while the managers just look the other way. And a few years later, we did another series of stories on rampant welfare fraud in the state of Washington. This series was really about how how Washington government made it so easy for them to cheat the system at the expense of the truly deserving families that were trying to get through the Great Recession at the time. All of us here have had stories that have led to real change. And just this year, we had a new law take effect because of one of my stories, Kimberly Bender's Law. I appreciate somebody that's willing to go on camera, like as a whistleblower, a great personal risk to tell their story. I, you know, those people are my heroes. It's the people it's our community that has made King 5 a successful establishment for 75 years. It is incredible to think of all of the places around the world the King 5 Yellow Jackets have been to. But also amazing to see how our own backyard has changed from the early days when Seattle's skyscrapers were less than 20 stories tall. King 5 moved to South Lake Union before Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, or Paul Allen were even born. The man who designed an early mock-up of our TV station went on to design the Space Needle. It's had the whole city of Seattle goggle-eyed for nearly a year. Now this is the summer when you can come to Seattle and see the world. That's an early King TV crew sharing news of the 1962 World's Fair from an anchor desk on the future grounds of Key Arena, which was not the only stadium that we would see come and go. We saw the Kingdom from both its birth in the 1970s to its implosion in 2000. And today, we are neighbors with T-Mobile Park and Lumen Field. As Paul Sylvie reports, it's one way to get back to our roots. November 25th, 1948. The first ever broadcast on King Television was a high school football game between West Seattle and Wenatchee. 75 years later, high school football is still king. But along that 75-year timeline, the station broadcasted numerous locally produced sporting events, from something as simple as an in-studio boxing match in the 1950s to a six-hour broadcast of the Hydros 30 years later. And along the way, there were colorful personalities to help bring those events to your living rooms, like King TV's first voice in sports. Legendary Bill O'Mara of Channel 5 reports. Oh, oh! He went completely around. I don't know whether Lewis is still in the boat or not. Over the years, the arrival of pro franchises helped Seattle evolve into a bona fide sports town. Wilson, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the initial voyage. When the Mariners arrived in 1977, King TV partnered with the team to broadcast games during the M's first years in the majors. King also had broadcast partnerships with the Sonics and Seahawks. It's the Mike Holmgren Show. Well, wait a minute, don't. You <laughs> took say that twice. You took my line. <laughs> Airing the Mike Holmgren Show and the Pete Carroll Show, which gave fans an exclusive look at the Hawks during prime time on Sunday nights. When the Sounders came to town in 2009, King produced a weekly show with the team, starring Seattle soccer legend Alan Hinton. We didn't have to rehearse, we just talked. And it was always fun, and we sang a little bit, we won some games. But it was a lot of fun, and uh, people still talk about it. The excitement of pro sports ushered in a new era of sportscasters at King 5, led by Don Poyer. When Tony Ventrella took over in 1982, he spent the next decade redefining the role of sports director at King TV. Anthony Ventrella's distinguished series, Wrestling Hold of the Week. I was doing Wrestling Hold of the Week at that point, because frankly, I thought it was complete nonsense. It was totally fake. But it, it was different. We had a great balance. We had, Lou, Lou actually was a good reporter. Lou Gellos covered some of the biggest names in Seattle sports in the 80s, including Brian Bosworth, who once sued the NFL for the right to wear his college number 44 in the pros. Lou wanted to work with King 5 photographer and talented sketch artist Bob Allen. Bob goes, what do you want me here? The cameras are loud in this. And I said, I know, but I don't, you don't need to shoot a frame. Let's draw it. I basically wrote a script that then he drew to. And the kicker was, my stand-up at the end was a drawing of me holding the microphone. <laughs> and so when it came back to them after I signed off, they're going like this on the anchor desk. And I, I knew that one worked, so that was pretty fun. Look, we've got the uh, guest there. Hey, Jay, you want to come back? In 1996, Akemi Takei became one of the first female sportscasters at King TV. It was such a time when there weren't that many women in sportscasting, and so 
I feel like in that office there at 333 Dexter Avenue North, it was such a great kind of family and you know it was such a fun time with you and guard and you guys always treated me like I meant that I should be there and so I felt like that was a really uh, welcoming feeling that I don't think it ever stood out to me that I shouldn't be there. In Peoria, Arizona, Akemi Takei, King 5 Sports. Since our 70th anniversary, there have been new milestones. First came COVID. While sports departments across the country curtailed their coverage, we added to ours. Yeah! One way to lighten the pandemic was to see what you were doing. Backyard sports was a summer hit. During that time, the Storm won their fourth WNBA title in the Wubble. We said goodbye to Sue Bird. The Mariners made the playoffs for the first time in two decades, causing a baseball frenzy in the Northwest. The Kraken became the newest NHL expansion team, creating newfound hockey fans during their first playoff run. And the Seahawks returned home to King 5 adding new shows like Seahawks Central to the long-running fifth quarter. Through all of King's professional personalities, it's the amateur stars who have really shined. We continue to feature the best of our local student athletes and coaches in our weekly prep zone features. We take a lot of pride in our high school coverage. It not only promotes positivity among students and staff, it gives us a chance to visit area communities. And while we enjoy being the visiting team week after week, in the big picture, we're all on the home team. Back to you, buddy! <laughs> Our morning team is on the air for four and a half hours every morning, but the newscast started much smaller. Mimi Jung reports. Before the sun rises in western Washington, the team at King 5 Mornings is getting viewers ready for their day with four and a half hours of news, weather, traffic, live reports, mixed with lighthearted moments that help people wake up with a smile. The show has changed a lot from 43 years ago when King 5 launched its first morning broadcast. From News Center 5, Don Madsen. Don Madsen anchored the show in 1980 with Jeff Renner forecasting the weather and traffic reports from Sky Twin Traffic. Back then, it was a half hour show from 6.30 to 7 a.m. That changed in the early 90s. But I remember thinking when we expanded from a half hour to an hour, how are we gonna fill an hour of news? Then it became two hours with a bigger anchor team. Dennis Bounds joined Joyce Taylor and Rich Marriott every morning. Bounds remembers covering some big stories in the morning hours, including the inauguration day storm in 1993. And we're on the air in the morning, and then all of a sudden the wind kicks up and they decide for us to stay on the air. And I think we were on the air for eight hours. King 5 Morning News then expanded earlier with the news starting at 4.30. With the population growing, the drive times increasing, and people waking up earlier, King 5 added a traffic anchor in studio to help commuters get to work on time. From around the Northwest and beyond. And in 2004 came the launch of Seattle Live, bringing two more hours of news to viewers on Kong. Alan Schaffler anchored the morning show for three years when we brought in live guests and cooking segments on Kong. We had uh, Giada De Laurentiis one time, when she was sort of on her way up before she became who she is. As an editor on the morning show for 32 years, Mike Blakey has seen technology change the way we get news on the air. But he says one thing has remained the same. The bar was just set very high early on, and I think all the anchors who came later just realized that. The faces of King 5 Mornings may have changed over the years, but the camaraderie always shines through. And no matter what story is unfolding, whether it's a deadly train derailment, a rare tornado, or snowstorms that have shut down roads and schools, keeping viewers informed first thing in the morning continues to be our mission four decades later. And after the morning show, you'll find New Day Northwest. The show has gone through more than a few changes over the years. Let's take you down the hall to Studio B. Here is Amity Idrisi. From its start in 2010, New Day was designed to inspire the best part of your day. During more than a decade on the couch, Margaret Larson hosted celebrities like Julie Andrews, Jodie Foster, George Takei, and Sue Burke. Every single minute of New Day, dedicated to exploring the Northwest through art, food, and high-flying entertainment. In January of 2016, King 5 moved into our new home on First Avenue South. We got a brand new beautiful set, 
but eventually had to say goodbye to our studio audience. Four years later, we had to say goodbye to Margaret, too, who chose to take a step back and focus on family. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for letting me be part of your new days for the past 10 years till we meet again. Then the challenge of finding a new host. Luckily, there was someone in the studio right next door who was dreaming of this opportunity. Oh, hey, that's me. Meantime, we had to keep the show running in the midst of the pandemic. I was allowed in studio, but the rest of the crew was working from home and taping the entire show online. Luckily, most things have returned to normal. We're back in studio full time with more shenanigans than ever before. Come one, come all to the greatest show on earth, New Day Northwest. We've even stepped outside of the studio and taken the show on the road. But no matter where we go, this show remains dedicated to educating, inspiring, and entertaining our audiences. And our biggest goal of all is to make you feel at home and make sure you enjoy your new day with us every day. Covering the four corners of the Northwest. From the mountains to the sound. This is Northwest Cable News. It was billed as the most technologically advanced newsroom in the world. Northwest Cable News hit air December 18th, 1995. Tapeless, all digital news, veteran journalists working with a lot of fresh faces to tell the stories across the region. With 24 hours a day to fill, we could dig deeper into the issues with long form stories. Northwest Extra. This helps clear the way for more vigorous federal protection of the so-called Southern resident orcas. And extended interviews on topics unique to the Northwest. Now, breaking news. But breaking news is where Northwest Cable made its mark. From rioting to the Nisqually earthquake. An eruption is imminent. The reawakening of Mount St. Helens, wildfires. 911, what is your emergency? The Oso slide and much more. NWCN, as it came to be known, could get on the air with a story and then stay on for as long as we needed to. Over the years, NWCN added a variety of feature segments and programs. Bonjour, all you gardening cats and gators. Cisco Morris expanded his weekly gardening segment on King to a 30-minute call-in show. And sports combined resources for a half hour nightly sports show that drew a lot of big names in sports and entertainment for more than 15 years. But after 21 years of connecting the Northwest, Open my kill. cable ran its course as 24-hour news moved to a much more mobile platform. NWCN said goodbye in 2017. I'm Ken Jones, photojournalist. I was hired at King in 1973. Back then, it was all film. Uh, this was my first news camera. It was a Bell & Howell 70DR. It was wind up. We get about 30 seconds on a spool. In those days, we would shoot news in the morning and early afternoon take our film to the developing lab. And then we would edit those news stories with scissors and glue. Then came the big shift, videotape. One of the first cameras was the TK76, a heavy, awkward camera that required a separate heavy tape recorder. All of a sudden, we went back to over 70 pounds of gear with lights, battery belt, and mics. On the plus side, we were able to take advantage of a new technology, the satellite truck. A mobile newsroom complete with editing and the ability to send your news story up to a satellite, which was then downloaded back to the station or could be sent anywhere in the U.S. In 79, 81, and 82, uh, we won the award for the best TV station in the country. Uh, and King is the station uh, kept up with that, and we won those awards in 2011 and 2013. Oh, and remember those satellite trucks and microwave vans? Well, today, all of that technology is in a box this size. Things just keep on moving. Well, from its beginning, King 5 has broken ground in its commitment to covering stories impacting diverse communities. We made big investments in that commitment with one of our newest departments facing race. It launched in 2020 as racial justice protests grew across the nation. I sat down with our original team to talk about the creation of Facing Race and the early programs that helped inspire it.
you don't get these chances often, you know, where everybody's listening. Good evening, I'm Joyce Taylor. Welcome to our first episode of Facing Race. I think the story on Facing Race that impacted me the most was uh, finding out about and then interviewing George Floyd's cousin who lived in Washington, lived in Gig Harbor. I cannot breathe. In that moment, I could feel him knowing that he was about to die. And we watched him die. I watched my cousin die. That was such an incredible story. I get chills just talking about it still. And the fact that you even found her was extraordinary. And our very first story asked the very crucial question I know you guys remember. When did you first realize that your race mattered? And what was interesting about that is that each of us as women of color, we know exactly the moment that we realized our race mattered. I was five, how old were you? Oh, around the same age. How old were you? Elementary school. We immediately knew what was Groundbreaking about that question is that when we ask people who are not of color, white people, it was such a confusing question for them. When did you realize your race mattered? My race what? Um. You know, King Five has a history of tackling some of these tough issues. And I found that out when I heard about Face to Face, which was a, a show that took on really tough issues, thorny issues, hosted by Roberta Bird. Hello, I'm Roberta Bird, and today we're face to face. Sergeant Shriver, the right wing white community and the left wing black community are in bed together against the war on poverty. What is your attitude toward this? All right, that's one man's opinion. Let's ask another man. A lot of people remember Celebrate the Differences, a show where they tackled issues around race, diversity, and culture. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Celebrate the Differences. I'm Enrique Cerna, along with Lori Matsukawa. I feel like Facing Race is like that new chapter to it, like that we're keeping that fire alive. And he just started crying, and Kathy said, are you trying to tell us that, that you're trans? And, and he nodded yes. And, and now Facing Race is going into other avenues of the LGBTQ plus community. We are intentionally looking for a diverse set of voices every day as part of our discussion of what we cover and how we cover it. Okay. I definitely see Facing Race just expanding and really tackling the big topics among everyone in our communities. King is a place they can come and they know that we're going to tell that story because it's ingrained as part of our newscast and part of what we do every day in trying to represent stories in this community. Behind the science of the weather, King 5 is committed to covering the climate and the environment in our beautiful region. I had a chance to sit down with former and current environmental reporters. They explored the impact on nature from our highest peaks. Snowpack isn't just about how deep the snow gets. To the sewers under our feet. And coverage that would extend beyond Washington state. Like when former reporter Gary Chittum was sent to the Gulf of Mexico to cover the Deepwater Horizon disaster. That oil just pumped out of the bottom of the ocean unchecked for 30 days or more. I'll give you an idea of just how persistent this stuff is. And uh, we went there and, and witnessed it for ourselves, how, how sticky that is and how, what it takes to get it off of live, wildlife. Coverage that would impact the next generation. King 5's current environmental reporter, Erica Zuko. I interviewed an ecologist who grew up watching that coverage and now was inspired to get involved with pollution cleanup. And they take a number of samples from different areas in each body of water. Over 50 years of experience at this table has seen the impacts of climate change, from dwindling snowpack to larger wildfires, a growing threat that reporter Glenn Farley reported on firsthand. 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you used the word climate change. There were a lot of people who would just not accept that at all. But always reporting on solutions. This is the biggest test so far of the state's forest health plan. Can you treat a forest so it has a better chance of surviving wildfire? We're seeing kind of the effects of us learning over time what the problems are and now being motivated to fix them. And so I think that the conversation has shifted a little bit. And as our understanding of the science and technology evolves, it reveals new hope on the horizon. I remember the first windmill story I did it was a stagnant windmill head. That's all it was. I can tell you, it is very windy up here and unpredictable. And now those things are computerized to work together to adjust to the wind. The technology is getting better. The energy is getting better into that technology. A lot of smart people working on it. 
King and, and Bila were really thinking about how to become more serious about creating a, a, you know, a meaningful web presence. From 1996 until now, there have been a lot of changes to King5.com. In the beginning, it was basic. The navigation was was weird. Uh, you know, maybe it was on the right side. I think when I first got there, a few sections, you know, few stories, you know, featured, uh, you know, mostly text. By 2001, you could get a personalized forecast or get help navigating the traffic by signing up for pager alerts. Video links were limited. Uh, it was very uh, difficult to get things like video online. It could take 15 minutes, 20 minutes before you could put up even a short piece of video. But each year, as broadband expanded, everything got faster. It's an evening magazine. Dot com special. The web was opening doors to a new audience. And a television first. We'll continue Evening Magazine live on your computer. I'll take your questions live on the webcast that follows. 2012 was when I started. There are things we do now that we weren't doing then. Um, our main focus was the website. In more recent years, a mix of social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and the app formerly known as Twitter have let King 5 interact with viewers in real time. A lot of reporter stories also live on the station's YouTube channel. King 5 Plus. And in 2022, King launched a streaming app with a 24-7 live feed, providing newscast replays, a host of King 5 favorites, and other long-form content. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike. For president. The summer of 1952, the first time national coverage of a presidential race reaches all four corners of the country on television. And that's in part thanks to King. It's the year Dwight Eisenhower is nominated at the Republican National Convention. King 5 insisted and funded a plan to link Chicago to Seattle with coaxial cable, the only way Seattle viewers can watch the historic moment live. I accept your summons. I will lead this crusade. From those early 50s elections to political commentary. Until now, I've never broadcast an opinion for this company. Like President Stimson Bullitt's controversial commentary condemning the Vietnam War. The intensity of our military action should be stepped down and we should stop bombing North Vietnam. The following is the editorial opinion of the King Broadcasting Company. Coverage shifted away from commentary, but it was still hard hitting. They'll be loaded with industrial waste. Jim Compton's political coverage and weekly show dug deep into the issues in Seattle and abroad in the 80s and 90s. This is the Compton Report. They say politicians are the problem. And shouldn't we send somebody back there who's fresh and isn't kind of steeped in this political garbage? With stories that went far beyond the bully pulpit. We are dependent on oil. Comparing American issues and habits to the rest of the world. We hope to shatter some myths about how our neighbors to the north view medicine. Our strategy is to compare a hospital in British Columbia with one in Port Angeles, Washington. We use 24 barrels per person per year, twice what the Japanese and Germans use. The next generation of King 5 political reporting made its own mark. King 5 Ad Watch. Through the early 2000s, the popular Upfront with Robert Mack put the issues under the microscope, vetting candidates and their claims. Did Maria Cantwell really vote 42 times to increase taxes? We requested all 42 votes from state archives. Beyond our extensive coverage of election candidates today, we take a closer look at the issues at the state capitol. I really hope that you can pass this bill. As the only TV station with a bureau in Olympia, we never miss developments on the laws impacting you. And when lawmakers go to work, so do we. So Drew Lawmakers made history last week. When legislators are here at the state capitol, we host a weekly segment called In Session, giving the big bills and issues a little more time than we can in our normal nightly newscast. Just the latest example of King 5 News putting in the extra effort to cover politics here in the state of Washington. And now we want to share with you more recent history, making a difference in our community. This year marks our 23rd year of the Home Team Harvest Food Drive. King 5's Leah Pizzetti takes us back to the beginning. Life in 2001. The resilience of humanity put to the test. I think after 9-11, people wanted to come together. 
King 5's Mimi Jung was there as a local Seattle TV station reached out a helping hand. I remember thinking, is this what I want to be doing on an early Saturday morning? We'd like to thank you guys for being with us. Thank an extra guys. added attraction. By the time I got there and started to see people arriving, and they were so excited. They had gotten up and watched the news that morning and had heard the call to come out and, and donate. It was the beginning of a partnership with Northwest Harvest, a Seattle nonprofit that now supports 400 food banks across Washington, a food drive that would grow to become one of the largest in the state. There's no better feeling than to know that you've gathered community to do something good. Yellow jackets spread out across the region. The event grew to become a multi-hour marathon raising millions of meals. Viewers dropping off bags of food, sometimes by the boatload. We have a boatload of food here. All to help people struggling to put food on the table. Wow. $50,000. That is until. We are following breaking news. Washington state is now ground zero for the first coronavirus death in the United States. Well, COVID changed home team harvest a lot. And for the second time, there was a massive growing need we had to meet. Home Team Harvest returned. Different, but bigger than ever. In 2020, King 5 more than doubled its goal from any year before to 20 million meals. Western Washington delivered 23.5 million. It's a mission King 5 is proud to be a part of. I'm really proud to be part of a station who gives back to the community in this way. A passion the whole King 5 family now shares. It isn't just the people on air, people behind the scenes, producers and directors and writers. Because stopping hunger starts with coming together as it always has. And we couldn't do it without you. There is still time to donate to help us reach this year's Home Team Harvest goal of 23 million meals. You can help by scanning that QR code on your screen, visiting king5.com slash home team harvest, or visit your local Safeway or Albertson store to give a grocery card. We want to thank you at home for joining us for the past hour and the past 75 years. It is our privilege to tell the stories of Western Washington, one bestowed on us by our founder and pioneer, Dorothy Bullitt, and an honor that we've held close to our hearts for some 75 years. And will for many more to come.